Happy Thanksgiving. This is uh, <sighs> Kevin Duclaron, uh once again coming to you in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, I just gave you a video uh, wishing you a happy Thanksgiving, but here we are again at uh, Pioneer Square, and um, I am right now about to preach uh, a Thanksgiving message, and uh, it's uh, in regards to a newspaper article that I just read. Um, I want to show you the newspaper. It is, um, hold on a second here, I'm using this new Bible, which is the uh, uh, New King James Bible, and so it's not staying open, it's not exactly cooperating with me, this is not usually the Bible that I use, but um, here, is the, uh, here is the article here, um, it's from Christian News uh, Northwest, and it is entitled, Idaho Ministers Feel Threatened by City If They Won't Do Same-Sex Nuptials. Um, and it's a two-page article, the front page and page 10, which is here. And I've written down some notes. Uh, I'm going to read out of um, Romans uh, chapter 1, verses uh, 1, chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. And I'm probably going to make reference to 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Um, I don't know how much of this information is going to reach Kerdaline, which is where this is taking place. But I thought it would be um, interesting to have uh, something said on behalf of the church in regards to what is going on right now with uh, the same-sex community and them having a misunderstanding of um, not, not just the church, but of God. And I think that's where the problem begins. So uh, pray with me, church, as I give this message. Good morning, Portland, and happy Thanksgiving, 2014. Um, I was reading an article today out of uh, Christian News Northwest, and I thought it would be uh, uh, something to talk about because it's very important. You know, just like you write, you have secular newspapers, we have Christian newspapers to keep up with what's going on in the Christian world um, on the Christian side. And um, this is uh, Evangelist Luz Salah, who's going to be 80, uh, just coming, or he's already 80 years old, so they're celebrating his birthday, so you can wish him a happy birthday. Um, now, right underneath his article is another article that reads as follows. Idaho ministers feel threatened by city if they won't do same-sex nuptials. Same-sex nuptials. In other words, there is a, a, there is a couple in Idaho, their ministers, their pastors, and I guess a couple of same-sex people approached them and wanted them to do um, a marriage, and the minister said, no, we can't, we don't agree with that. And um, basically the response of, of, of the same-sex community was to put them in jail, or to threaten them, to put them in jail for 180 days uh, if they did not perform this nuptial agreement. The article reads as follows, um, and I won't read the entire thing, but just to highlight, uh, the government should not force ordained ministers to act contrary to their faith under threat of jail time and criminal fines, um, said ADF Senior Legal Counsel Jeremy uh, Tedesco. Many have denied that pastors would ever be forced to perform ceremonies that are completely at odds with their faith. But that's what is happening here. That is in Kerdaline. Another portion of the article reads as follows. It says, uh, um, I'm going to keep their name out of this, but it says the city's public account, uh, the couple said that Kerdaline officials initially told them privately and also publicly stated that the couple would violate the city's public accommodation 
statute, once same-sex marriage became legal in Idaho, if they declined to perform a same-sex ceremony at their chapel. Um, it says, on October 17th, the couple respectfully declined such a ceremony. The lawsuit was declined. The lawsuit was filed because the couple said they faced up to 180 days in jail and up to a thousand dollars in fines for each day they declined to perform that ceremony. This is from Christian News in Northwest. So if you're a Christian and you have a ministry, you cannot deny same-sex couples the freedom in Idaho not to marry them. But let me ask you a question. Isn't that against the constitutional rights of those people who are Christians to exercise their freedom of religion? If I'm a pastor in a church and it is my belief and it is my faith that I should not marry same-sex couples, the same as it is the freedom of those um, to practice their religion and proceed into marrying one another, that is, the same sex. If I say no, that's against my belief and my religion, I think as an American minister, I should have the right to say no to something that I do not believe in. It seems to me that Idaho authorities are violating the constitutional rights of this ministry and of this couple who does not believe because they also have a constitutional right to say, no, we do not believe that our God wants us to marry this couple. I mean, you got to play it fair, people. If we're going to side with the same-sex couples and give them permission to do that, you got to give the straight couples the same right to say no, because that's our belief in our constitutional right. Now, I think one of the things that was failed to mention in the article is the fact that the whole the homosexual community, the reason why they exist, it begins with their relationship with God in Romans 1, 18 through 32. The problem is not necessarily the couple, the problem is with God. When you go into Romans 1, the Bible says in Romans 1, 18 through 32, that the problem is with God. Verse uh, 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because that which is written about God is evident to them, and it is within them. Um, the Bible says that, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes um, are clearly seen being understood by uh, the things that are made, and so they are without excuse. Uh, and then verse 21, which is the point here, it says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. And so, and they became foolish in their speculation, and their foolish heart was darkened. Listen, Portland, the issue here is that man does not glorify God. And as a result of man not glorifying God, his position against man is to turn them over to the life of homosexuality. The reason why people are practicing same sex today is because of their relationship with God. It's not just because, oh, we have a desire to be gay. No, it is God that is judging man. It's not just the couple, uh, the same sex couple. It's everyone who does not believe. That is his hit against humanity. It's not just a community issue. It is a global issue, worldwide issue. It is an issue that the Almighty has against man, unbelieving man, that they don't feel in their heart that they need to glorify God, honor God, acknowledge him, him as God for who he is, and therefore his response to them is to turn their hearts over to homosexuality, over to lesbianism, over to violence, over to crime, over to sin, over to all the wicked things that you see that man practice in the world today. When you go into Multnomah County Jail and you find those criminals, it is because God turned them over to a life of sin because they refuse to honor God. If those people wanting to get married, it is because they refuse to honor God. The Bible says, you shall have no other gods before me in Exodus. You shall have nothing before me. If that thing that someone would have taken individual time by themselves to reconcile with God, I can almost assure you that God would have forgiven them, God would have healed them, God would have given them opposite sex to marry. And the Bible says that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
You shall be saved from the wrath of God. You shall be saved from a life of sin. You shall be saved from the judgment of being and living the condemnation that God has pronounced to man, which is to be a homosexual. Now, there's another part of the article which I thought was really interesting when, um, when they said this. It says that, in the beginning it says that the government should not force or gain ministers to act contrary to their faith. But, let me tell you something. The, go the government has done beyond that. Not just act contrary to their faith. The government has forced ministers to engage in homosexuality with that community. Why? Because they want the community to feel free to express themselves. But what about us who are the church where God tells us not to go in that direction? In other words, pursue Christ. Pursue a right relationship with me by faith so I can forgive you. What about the fact that the government is forcing and judging Christians to live that way? Forcing and judging Christians to act that way and to do those things. It's not just a marriage uh, 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 ceremony that's not being done, but it's Christians that are being uh, coped and that are being forced and are being judged to live as homosexuals when they don't want to because it is against the Christian doctrine. It is against what God had in store. From the very beginning, remember, in Genesis, the Lord says, it is not good for a man to be alone, and I will make you a suitable helper. The suitable helper was not another man. The suitable helper was he. Now, you all know the scriptures, and you all know Genesis 2, and you all know the marriage that took place in Genesis 2. You all understand that God supports marriage. You go to 1 Corinthians 7, you understand that God supports marriage and says it is better to marry than to burn. Now, I'm not going to stand here and belabor the point and kick against the horse, but you understand that it begins with a right relationship with God, a right view of God, a right knowledge of God, a right understanding of God. It means you kneel, you yield before the Almighty God so that He can heal your heart from sin. If you don't heal your heart from sin, beloved, you're going to remain in that sin, embittered in that sin, and you're going to think you have the right to be gay. No, beloved, you don't have the right to be gay because that is the wrath of God upon on you. Get out from the wrath of God. Get out from the wrath of God and be saved from the wrath of God. Instead, embrace the grace of God. Embrace the love of God. Embrace the forgiveness of God. Embrace the righteousness of God. Embrace the Son of God so you can be blessed with the Holy Spirit and not have to subject yourself or members of the church to a life of homosexuality and not only that, forcing them not to be able to exercise their freedom of religion under the United States Constitution. God bless you. Father, I pray for this city, and whether or not this city accepts or gives homosexuals permission to marry, let them understand from the very beginning that the issue is the knowledge and the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you do, you do to the glory of God. Same-sex marriage does not glorify God because it is His wrath that is on display, not His love, not His grace, not His mercy, not His compassion. And so, Father, I pray for the forgiveness of the government at Idaho and for the restoration of that church, both ministers, and any minister, in any church that takes that biblical position to honor and to glorify You. I pray for those people in that community that they would repent of their sin and to give You glory. And I pray for any here who stands with that community and has a misunderstanding of what you are asking of them as unbelievers. In Jesus' name, amen.